Greeting and welcome to our virtual service for this weekend. We are happy to announce that, Lord willing, we will have our 1030 morning service next Sunday, May 31st. We've received guidelines from the Oregon Ministry Network. And we'll be getting information out over the next few days regarding how we plan to apply good health and safety procedures. And we can have service 1030. We're not having the Sunday school service yet for the Sunday night, but beginning in June, um, we are also going to have Wednesday night Bible study. So for now, the Sunday morning 1030 worship service, and then beginning with the first Wednesday of June to have the Bible study on that night. And going forward from there, we'll be able to add um, the bits and pieces back in uh, as the Lord helps us do so. We know that some of you should wait a while, and for you, we'll continue to record and broadcast these messages. And we are honored to do so, and we thank God for the opportunity to reach out in this way. Let's begin with a word of prayer. I ask my wife Doris to lead us in an opening prayer. Hello, and as we go to the Lord in prayer, let us remember those that have a special need. You know many people right now who are either suffering or struggling, uh, and we just need to remember to lift each other up in prayer all the time. I'd like for us to pray together the Lord's Prayer from Matthew chapter 6. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen.
just sing his praises. I trust you were singing along. Hallelujah. Our message today, the church, God's flock. We've talked about the church, the temple of God, the church, the family of God, the city of God, the church, the bride of Christ. Last week, the church as soldiers. And this week, or last time it was church, God's field. And now, this week, the church, God's flock. The church, God's flock. If you need a subtitle for this message, it's Lions and Bears and Wolves, Oh My. We start with Psalm 100, verse 3. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. We are referred to as the flock of the Lord. We are likened to sheep. If you don't like it, deal with it, because it fits us very, very well. Throughout Scripture, beginning very early on, the Lord spoke of His people as being His sheep, as being His flock. Through Moses, God led His people as a flock. Psalm 77, verse 20 says, Lord, You led Your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. God had to change Moses from a man of brute force to a man who became content to just take care of someone else's sheep. It took decades but God molded that man's heart so that Moses could lead with a, a godly attitude, the same attitude toward the people that God had. They're the flock of God. David, before he became king, still as a young man, mentioned in 1 Samuel chapter 17, in a passage in chapter, in verse, chapter 17, verses 34 through 37, how that when he was tending sheep as a young man, and a lion and a bear came out against this flock of and he said, I killed him. I protected the sheep. I protected the flock. And God built into David, though David was a man who was a warrior, and he was a man who was a leader. He was a singer. He, was a, he had so many things, aspects to his life. Yet, to begin with, God got him established as a shepherd and caring for sheep. And David knew that this was the kind of heart that he had to have toward God's people because it was the heart that God had toward his people, the flock. Sheep are powerless against predators. They're powerless against predators. There are no warrior sheep. There are no tough guy sheep. Imagine a young man or young, young, a young adult sheep saying, in sheep school today, our teacher taught us to be high in self-esteem. Our teacher said, you can become anything you want. Well, then I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to be a fighting sheep. I'm going to study Kung Fu. I'm going to take on those lions and bears and wolves. I'm going to go ninja on them. They're, they're going to call me Rambo. Nope, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Sheep are powerless against predators. We need the Lord as my shepherd to fight our battles for us. And he does that completely. And he does it so well that we can rest in him. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Imagine the lion coming. Those teeth, those claws, there's no chance. But we need the Lord is my shepherd, and he will take on our adversary the devil. You know, I quote my dad often and in a passage in a book that dad wrote, what you should know about the church. He wrote on this subject, he said, In the sheep, we see helplessness and vulnerability, total dependence on the shepherd for protection, survival, and well-being. We see close relationship with the shepherd, trust and obedience, security, peace, worry-free contentment, total fulfillment. Do you have that today? Do I have that today? That's the, that's the attitude the sheep have toward the shepherd. And in the shepherd, we see faithfulness, watchful care and protection, full responsibility for the well-being of the sheep, and a commitment to fulfill that trust, self-sacrifice for the sake of the flock, diligence in disciplining the sheep, providing everything needed for the health and growth of the flock, special attention to the lambs and to the sick and to the injured of the flock, keeping each sheep close to himself and to the rest of the flock. Do you feel the Lord drawing you in those ways? He is perfect at these things. The Lord is our shepherd, and he gets it right. He, he cares for us according to our needs and according to his complete ability to care for us. 
God's people being spoken of as the flock of sheep is carried on through the prophets. In Ezekiel 34 and also in Jeremiah 23, God promised that God would send a true shepherd to lead his, his flock. And it mentioned in those passages that they were careless leaders who were abusing the flock and how that rose God's anger up against those who would abuse his precious flock. God cares for us as a good shepherd cares for a flock. Jesus is the full milk fulfillment of the good shepherd and the prophecies regarding a shepherd. And these prophecies that we mentioned in Ezekiel and Jeremiah, Jeremiah, that there would be someone who would come who would be that good shepherd. And Jesus is that good shepherd. In John chapter 10, verse 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. What an ultimate, ultimate um, role to take on. This was his destiny and his destiny for us that we would be won back from the wickedness of sin and he would be rescued from that predator, the devil, who has torn up our lives and threatened us in every way. And he came, Jesus came to be our shepherd, the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. Also in that 10th chapter, verses 27 and 28, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. We are secure in Him. Now there are some who look at those verses, and some who proclaim unconditional eternal security as a doctrine, and they jump straight to verse 28, and they kind of skip over verse 27. The sentence begins with Jesus saying, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Are we hearing His voice? Does He know us through and through? Are we following Him? There are no sheep in His flock who are not His, who do not belong to Him, who do not follow Him, who do not hear His voice, whom He does not know. Remember those, those words that Jesus would have to speak to those whose hearts were not right. He said, depart from Me, I do not know you. But He knows His sheep. Those who are His, He knows. And on that basis of relationship, He said, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. He is a faithful shepherd. He has all the power he needs to keep us on the straight and narrow and to keep us in that relationship that gives us eternal life. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 10. There was a prophecy given about the coming Messiah. And it said, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. The compassionate shepherd. That's the Messiah who is to come. And that was Jesus. We see that also fulfilled in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. It says, When Jesus saw the crowds, He had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Sheep without a shepherd. They're, sheep do not handle democracy very well. They don't choose a leader who will boldly go before them and make wise decisions. Sheep without a shepherd are just simply helpless and harassed. And Jesus saw the crowds and He saw that spiritually their lives were just such a mess. The need for a Savior, the need for the Good Shepherd was there. And that's why He came and said He had compassion upon the crowds. Do we have compassion upon those who are lost and far from God? Are we judgmental or are we compassionate? Let's not judge, but let's share the good news of Christ with others, especially those wandering sheep who need to know that there's comfort, there's safety, there's protection, and there's a right relationship as we... Stay close to Jesus, our shepherd. After the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, Jesus met with his disciples. And Jesus spoke to Peter during this time before Jesus ascended to heaven. He spoke to Peter about leadership and caring. Now Peter was an adept fisherman. How much experience he had with sheep, we don't know. But Jesus carried on this, this same metaphor of sheep for his people in John 21. And he said to Peter, beginning at verse 17. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Verse 17, the third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. 
heard a statement recently that said, if serving is beneath you, then leading is beyond you. The Lord was calling Peter to a role of leadership in people's lives, but he had to have that feed and care for the sheep attitude, that serving attitude. And the Lord is looking for people who will have that kind of heart. There's such a need for leadership, godly leadership, leadership in the right direction, spiritually and in our world in every way. But it needs to be, it needs to be people who are compassionate, people who have a serving heart and not a lording it over um, others attitude, but a serving attitude. And may the Lord build that into everyone who is in leadership. In Acts chapter 20, we have the Apostle Paul meeting with the leaders of the church in Ephesus. And it was a farewell event and a meeting. And Paul said to them, you're not going to see me again. And he gave them these strong warnings in Acts chapter 20. Verses 28 and 29, he said, Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. It even goes on to say some of them will come from your own ranks. What a, what a sorrowful heart the Apostle must have had to know that the Spirit of God was revealing this to him. This church that he cared so much about that he would not see again. That he had to remind them once again to be good shepherds of the flock. Knowing that some would, would turn away and spiritually um, be predators against God's own people. What a, what a terrible thing when people abuse a position of leadership or position of influence and to take people astray. It's, it's a terrible thing when somebody tries to cheat someone out of their money. How much worse when they try to cheat somebody out of their relationship with God. But some will do that. We always have to be close to our shepherd, knowing that he will protect us and he will preserve us. And his Holy Spirit will keep us close to him. We will hide his word in our heart. We will follow him. And we will know him in spirit and in truth. And we will know that, that closeness of our shepherd. I remember in Bible college days, and they were talking about faculty and Bible college teachers and professors in the Bible college setting. And they mentioned that they wanted um, among, among their teaching staff, they want ministers, they want teachers who have actively been in pastoral role very recently or currently. And the phrase they used was, we want shepherds who still have the smell of the sheep on their robes. And that's powerful. It's important. And it applies, doesn't it? We, whatever our role are, whatever our tasks are, we need to know that as God puts us in connection with others, that we need to have that tender-hearted understanding that they have a shepherd. And we need to help them stay close to their shepherd and model by staying close to our shepherd as well. Amen. Psalm 23. Very familiar. Yes. But let's hear it again. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For Thou art with me, Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Every verse of that is meaningful. And one thing that jumped out to me is that third verse where it says he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads us in right paths. Your shepherd is leading you in right and good things. He's got his name on the line for his name's sake. His name is on the line with how he leads your life. And he will be honored and glorified as we follow the path that he puts before our lives and leads us through. He goes with us, doesn't he? Aren't you glad you have a shepherd? So this message today, what does it mean to you and me? Hopefully it's a comfort and an encouragement to remember. As we stay close to Jesus, we hide His Word in our heart. We allow Him to speak to us. I remember that, that song, more and more about Jesus. More about Jesus in His Word, holding communion with my Lord. Hearing His voice in every line, making each faithful saying, mine. Through His Word, by His Holy Spirit, that relationship between sheep and shepherd. We are the flock that belongs to Him and He cares for us. So when we go through certain trials, we go through difficult, dark times, know that the shepherd is with us. He is leading us 
in right paths because his name is on the line. And he will honor his name by how he cares for us. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. We thank you for your word. We thank you that we can rest and be content just as sheep who are well cared for are so content and so bonded to their shepherd. Cause our hearts to belong to you. Lord, if there's anyone hearing these words today who is not at rest, they're not in a right relationship, may they take this opportunity to surrender and say, Lord, rescue me from what the enemy has sought to do in my life and draw me in, just as you said in your word, that you draw us in as a shepherd takes care of the sheep and how you carry a lamb. Lord, just carry our hearts close to you, meet our every need, and help us share this joy of a bonded relationship of communion with our Lord Jesus Christ. In that name we pray. Amen.